So in this example, I'm preparing a company tax return for 2022. First thing I'm doing is connecting my QuickBooks data file. And in this case, because I'm an accounting firm, you'll notice that I will be selecting a client from a list of clients. If you're just a business operator with just one file, this is a whole lot easier. You don't need to select that client, you just select that entity there. I'll bring in the 2022 data. And of course, make sure your accounting data is in good order before you do this, although you can always make changes and then do a refresh on the data set. So don't worry too much if you do have some changes that you need to make. You'll have your line items that are imported from QuickBooks. The profit and loss and the balance sheet will look exactly the same as they do inside of QuickBooks. And then the next step is to click through to accounts and just check your classifications. Now, nine times out of 10, Logit's going to do this automatically for you. You don't have to make any changes. But just so that you know, it's pretty easy to make a change. If, for instance, this was classified incorrectly, you just jump in there, have a look through the classification chart. It is pretty easy um, to understand. And if it was a bank account, you select bank account. Or alternatively, you can just use a predictive text once you know the account names and, you, and you're good to go. So here we've got assets, liabilities, same thing again, just have a check through. Note for the assets and liabilities, the tags are really n nothing more than, you know, if you don't want to import a line item, uh, I wouldn't suggest you take advantage of that because then your balance sheet's not going to balance and the tax form uh, will throw an error. So be careful with that function. There is also inside of here related accounts. The related accounts are really for when you are working with when you're working with financial reports. So you don't really need this for the tax forms. Um, you should be aware that in the revenue and expenses sections, you've got tags here that could be relevant, like for instance, cash flow boost, non-assessable, and it's possible that this um, final micro business grant was non-assessable as well. So just tag it up and you'll see what happens in the tax forms as a result. Same thing over here on the expenses. Have a look through related accounts. You could create relationships between that depreciation and, a and an asset group. Um, this is more for the working paper function. And then down here, again, classifications and tags so non-deductible entertainment. Generally, entertainment costs are not going to be deductible unless maybe they're in-house expenses. But do your own research in relation to any entertainment expenses you have. And check out our videos on depreciation and temporary full expensing. So you might want to um, avail yourself of the accelerated depreciation rules. Uh, save you having to do depreciation calculations. Noting that we have put our depreciable asset in here into temporary full expensing, the depreciation module in Logit is for tax purposes. So it's not an accounting depreciation module, it really is a tax depreciation module, and you'll see the values will be added into the tax return. So now I'm adding in my 2022 tax return. The system will activate based on what uh, facts are reportable. And if we have a look in here, you'll notice that interest, for instance, and this is something to be aware of, the system will populate the QBO value. So in the accounts, there's interest, but it is possible that the tax value is different. And this would be the case in the case of dividends, trust distributions or partnership income, in which case we do request that you put in a manual value. You'll notice that if the taxable value is greater than the accounting value, you get an increasing adjustment and that will reflect in the reconciliation section as other assessable income. If it was the other way around, if it was a decreasing adjustment, then it would go something like this. And now you'll have a decreasing adjustment and you'll see that as a decreasing adjustment in the reconciliation section. So just be aware of aware of that um, that interest, and also, as I said again, um, trust partnership and trust partnership and um, dividends. 
So just looking through here, there's all the line items that got classified in here. Cost of sales. And it's easy to make a change. If you want to make a change in here, just simply uh, right click on one of those. Open it in there. You'll notice that we've now got um, we've got the classification here. You can have a look through there or control V to find that that line item if you can't see it straight off the bat. So other consumables, maybe you want to put that to purchases. And if we then jump back to in here and refresh, you'll notice that that other consumables moves up into the cost of sales area. So very easy to reclassify and move line items around. Obviously the tax expenses is excluded from all the calculations as you'd, as you'd hope. The reconciliation is, is completed automatically. Noting that I did classify entertainment as non-deductible. Depreciation in this case is treated as non-deductible. The super payable for 30 June 2022. Remember that unpaid super is not deductible. In the case of depreciation, it then captures the actual tax value. This is the accounting value being excluded. And then down here, you've got other income not included in accessible income. You saw me work on the interest and you saw me tag the grant as non-assessable income. Other deductible income, oh sorry, other deductible expenses, you're super payable from 30 June 2021, now becoming deductible because obviously it was paid during that 2022 financial year. All your accounting facts or reportable financial and other information facts are um, reported in here automatically. Just the totals go to the ATO, but for, for the sake of what you've got in the system, you've got the full granular detail in there for whatever's gone through. The depreciation, that is a tax value coming in from the tax calculators and also going through to the reconciliation. Your tax calculation handled automatically and the tax rate will be varied based on whether it's a base rate entity at 25%, so is it a base rate entity? Yes, so the tax rate will be 25% rather than 30% if it wasn't a base rate entity. In the case of your PAYG instalments, if this was a live entity, I would be able to click here and those instalments would pull in from the ATO. Noting if you are working with a company that has a franking account, you can certainly manage your franking account in here. You can manage your share register in here and you can manage your dividend payments in here as well. So there's the payments of dividends and those will be automatically injected into the tax form. So financial information, if we have a look down here, we've got our dividend and interest schedules automatically filled based on what came through from the dividend calculator. Of course, you could manually fill those if you want, but obviously our tools make this a whole lot easier. You've got a franking account balance and there are franking transactions that are transpiring through the year and that have been caught and captured inside of your franking account. So easy to work with franking account and we do have a video that shows you how to work with this. Finally, that tax form will be, um, be ready to go. Just make sure you validate it, clear out all the errors, and then complete and lodge.